Hi everyone and welcome to this week's AirSat One Space Art Challenge. I'm Emer O'Boyle and this week we will be looking at the theme of the dark. The dark is a really precious commodity for astronomers. It allows them to see the very faint and distant light from millions of light years away that during our daylight hours would be otherwise impossible to see because the light from our sun is so much brighter. So while the astronomers need the dark to learn about the universe around us, artists for hundreds of years have also been using the dark to understand maybe our internal world. And for this week's challenge, we're going to look at a technique called chiaroscuro which was developed by artists during the Renaissance period. This Renaissance artist is a woman called Artemisia Gentileschi and she perfected the use of chiaroscuro using the contrast between dark and light to create drama in her paintings. As well as being busy building Ireland's first satellite, some of the AirSat 1 team have very kindly agreed to be our models for this week's challenge. I've added the photographs that they sent us to the end of the video and um, so after the demonstration you could have a look and maybe do a screen grab of the ones you'd like to start working with. What you'll need for the challenge is a piece of paper, you'll need some charcoal if you have it a compressed charcoal and a piece of willow charcoal, an eraser or a putty rubber and if you don't have those you can also do this with a soft pencil it'll just take you a little bit longer. You'll need an old brush too and some hairspray or fixative to keep your drawing in place once you're finished because the charcoal wipes off really easily. So the drawing I'm about to demonstrate took about half an hour. Okay, I'm gonna start by putting down the dark ground using the side of the uh, compressed charcoal. I'm gonna try and get it as evenly as possible at this stage. The nice thing about working with charcoal is that it's loose, it's soft and you can cover ground very quickly with it. Okay and then I'm going to take a dry brush and push the charcoal into the page and it'll even out the surface somewhat. So that's the first stage. The next step is I'm going to map in the features and there's a nice symmetry to the face. Um, I'm working from Maeve's photograph and she's looking directly straight ahead at the camera. So I'm going to start with the top of her head around here, then her chin about here and then I'll draw a basic oval shape lightly enough now. Then I'm going to draw the first guideline that will help us set, set all of the features um, in correct relation to each other is a centre line straight down from the top of her head to her chin. Then halfway across her, her face another light line and that will indicate roughly where her eyes sit. Then halfway between that line and the chin we'll put in another mark here to indicate the bottom of her nose. And halfway again between the bottom of her nose and her chin, we'll put in a line to indicate roughly where her um, the bottom of her lip is. We'll look at where roughly her hairline is here, at the top of her head. Um, there's a nice conical shape, it's like a, an upside down triangle here, marking in the bridge of her nose. Her eyebrows will sit up around here, roughly, and her eyes then, her tear duct will be 
about there in the same distance from the center line on the other side and then that distance between the two tear ducts will give you the width of her eye so you can mark in those points there we'll be mostly ignoring this side but it's good to plot them out in relation to each other then if you draw a line directly down from the point of her tear duct that will tell you roughly where her the side of her nostrils are so we'll mark those two in and then if you come back up and look at where her pupil the pupil of her eye sits will sit somewhere there on that line and draw another invisible line from the inner edge of the pupil right down to the edge of the mouth that that'll give you roughly where her mouth is where the edge of her mouth is and we'll do the same on the other side so from the inner line of the pupil straight down to about there okay and her neck is partially covered by her hair so we can decide or yeah i'll decide later on whether or not i want to mark that in so now we're going to start the drawing <clears throat> and we'll be using a rubber i'm using a putty rubber but you can use any kind of a razor i just like these ones because you can push them around you can make them different shapes roll them into points and um it, it works these putty rubbers work well with the charcoal so the first thing we're going to do is look at in fact it's the main thing we're going to do is going to be looking at the shape of where the light hits the side of Maeve's face so I'm starting up here on the forehead and just very gently I'm not taking off too much charcoal I'll mark in these shapes so that's the first shape there you can see at the side of her forehead is kind of a diagonal first and then a straight line down so really looking in in at the shape not a detail just the shape Okay, now, so there's compressed charcoal, that's quite, well it's compressed, it's all compact, a little bit harder, and then there's willow charcoal. Um, you can use one or the other, but I just think when you're coming in to fix up some of the lines, or to adjust some of the lines, if you think you've taken away a little bit too much tone, the willow charcoal is good, it's very soft, it's much so softer than the than the um, compressed charcoal so you can bring those lines in there I'm going to um, and then back to, I'm switching back to the putty rubber again and for the rest of this drawing I'll be doing that I'll be moving between using the the putty rubber or your eraser um, and between that and the willow charcoal just to refine some of the features. That line at the top of her eyelid is, is important. There are a few key points around the eyes that you should um, just observe carefully. Also the line, this dark line, where the the top of the eyelid meets the ball of the eye. And then the bottom lid. I'm not going to indicate that very strongly. There's a little bit of reflected light coming from the side of her nostril here over onto this side of her cheek so I'm just going to very softly lift 
a little bit of the charcoal off there. That'll also help to define the um, the area where her cheek turns down towards her mouth. So I'm looking at the shape of the shadow beneath the bottom of her eye socket. And now there's this tiny little highlight there on her eye. I'm going to need to come back in again on that. I've taken too much away where the pupil, where the centre of her pupil is. So the highlight is on the iris. And then her pupil. has a little highlight there at the bottom. Now, I think the eyebrow I have too low. So I'm gonna come across again. Bring that up. Now that line is a little bit hard, so I'm just going to use a brush to soften it a little bit. Just dab, dab, dab. Soften that line. Now, I see that the distance between the edge of her eye and the edge of her face needs to be increased. So I'm going to bring this out slightly. And because I've brought that out slightly, I need to bring her jaw or her cheekbone out just very, very slightly. I just make very minor adjustments um, at each step. And I want to just redefine this shadow shape here. Around her nose and going up to the line of her glasses. I'm just going to very softly indicate where the glasses, where Maeve's glasses are. So I can see that the top line comes up just above her This, it goes very slightly up to the right, or mm, there's a slight curve on it. I'm going to bring it across like that. It disappears into the dark there. And then over on this side, we'll mark in, let's say it's just slightly above the eye duct. The, the the part that goes the bridge bridge uh, over the bridge of her nose. Okay, and then just one last thing. There's a lovely little shadow here that the bridge of the glasses there creates on the side of her nose. So I'm just going to indicate that slightly, a little bit off. Soften this a little bit more. I'm not sure I want that line there at all. Ah, I think that'll do. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope you enjoy your drawings.